strong women, strong messages, and yes, with that one I have the pleasure to introduce to you the founding president of Evora, former rector of the Istanbul Technical University, which is her alma mater. Mrs. Salama is the first and so far only woman rector of the legendary and oldest educational institution of Turkey. She was the only one to date to serve two consecutive terms and Mrs. Salamer established countless reforms and restructured the school during her eight years of incredibly dedicated and productive hard work. She's boosted equal gender opportunities. Uh, she has empowered many faculty members to leadership roles. And she's also on the board now of several <coughs> affable foundations and initiatives. She's a queen of advancement, <laughs> leader, academician, philanthropist, wonderful wife and mother. Please welcome Gülsün Saldamer. Commissioner for Research and Innovation, Carlos Moedas. UN Women Regional Director for Europe and Central Asia, Egypt, York, Gisla Dottir. I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Ambassador Selim Yenel, Ambassador Timo Ranta, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor and pleasure for us to have such a distinguished audience here with us for this event. It is also encouraging for Evora to have the top level support of European Commission and UN Women, as well as that of the ambassadors of countries. Rectors, vice rectors, and distinguished colleagues from academia and other higher education and research networks, together with media organizations, they are all here. So we have a very strong support. Thank you very much for being with us here. We are very happy to be able to hold this inauguration ceremony with your invaluable participation. As women directors, we had different experiences in different countries, in different universities. We have at least one problem, however, which was common to all. It was not easy for a women academic to climb up the ladders to reach the top level decision making and authority positions in higher education and research. This is obviously not a simple problem which can be, can be fully explained in the short opening address, but let me say a few words about the main obstacles and resistances that we face during our lives. We all experience biased or unbiased barriers in different forms coming from our institutional cultures and social networks, as well as from the legislation of our countries. We usually recognize and understand such barriers since these are certainly the visible part of the iceberg. Some of the barriers are, however, not so visible and many times we do not know how to handle them. There, we need more effort, better support, and well-established structures to understand the forms and causes of the resistances that we are facing. We also need to be more patient and inclusive to be able to work together with all the stakeholders involved to design and implement the necessary changes step by step. Dear colleagues, we know that this is a change process and we should be prepared to deal with this immensely complex problem. Legislation may help, may help to solve it, but it is not a magic wand, and everyone knows that it takes, it takes quite a long time to overcome the cultural and social barriers. We know that. Change needs to be assisted by transparency in recruitment and promotion processes, as well as equal representation in the decision-making bodies. Definition of excellence in academia, distribution of research funding, reaching mobility opportunities, improving work-life balance are some of the other important areas to be focused on. 
there are also barriers, resistances, coming from the women academics themselves. Therefore, we not only need to take into consideration all these complicated aspects of the issue, but also we have to be prepared to foresee the future challenges. Let me tell you a few words about my personal experience. When I was elected director of Istanbul Technical University in 1996, I received many calls from the journalists asking for interviews. On the other hand, I was also invited to give keynote speeches in uh, national and international universities. Their main question was, how did you as a woman manage to be director of a technical university, which is a male dominated institution? It was the first time in my life that I was faced with this with, uh, gender problem. Although I immediately answered such question as, I have always had support, there was no problem, no barriers at all. And this was the you know, turning point in my life because I didn't have gender perspective at that time. Thinking about my academic life, I started to look at, the, look at everything from a different point of view, trying to develop a gender perspective towards all the processes in decision making and implementations. After I stepped down in 2004, I was elected to the board of European University Association. Ever since I was elected to be a board member of European University Association in 2005, I had a chance to meet many female and male rectors to discuss issues related to our universities and academia in general. When we as the female rectors came together to share our experiences, we all understood and admitted the importance of role models for achieving improvement in gender equality in our institutions. We also accepted that gender sensitive policies and strategies help to sustain a better gender balance in our institutions. Dear colleagues, that's how we started to organize Beyond the Glass Ceiling Biennial Conferences in 2008 with 21 participants. So we reached quite a number of members. I'm really very happy about that. Following that, we decided to form the European Women Rectors Platform in 2010. At the end of the 2014 conference, we designed Istanbul recommendations addressing academic leaders, national authorities, and supranational organizations. During these conferences and during the preparation of the Istanbul recommendations, we, all, we have always had experts from the field with us to support us, to give us the necessary feedback and knowledge to make the you know, sound, uh, to design the sound steps towards achieving better uh, improvement. European Women Rectors Platforms, Platform was able to attract over 200 members throughout the years as our members increased and our intercontinental links improved we decided to establish a legal entity in Brussels. In 2014, we began to take the necessary steps and work with prestigious institutions to carry out the process. We were able to design and craft this association under the Belgian law with a royal decree in December 2015. After the inauguration, we will be accepting applications for Evora membership. We hope to reach a wide number of colleagues to be able to adequately represent women decision makers in higher education and research across Europe. We all know that European Commission actions have been visible and effective since late 1990s, but the Horizon 2020 has intensified the efforts towards achieving better results by giving priority to the representation of women at decision-making levels in higher education and research and also in STEM areas. These issues have been on the research agenda of the European Commission funded gender equality projects in the last decades. Many valuable projects have been completed and there are many others which are still running. A large number of 
the more recent projects are focused on implementation rather than only doing research. We do hope that such projects will create a much better impact on the institutions towards achieving gender equality. Dear guests, dear colleagues, we started out with great hopes to incorporate our experiences and knowledge under the umbrella of EBORA with all the parties' support and encouragement in order to empower, encourage, and equip the younger generations of women to run for leadership positions. EVORA is formed with the awareness that challenges lie ahead. We must strive to achieve gender balance in our universities. We must work to provide equal opportunities for female and male academics. We must address low rep representation of women at decision-making levels and STEM areas. We must be sensitive to all sorts of vertical and horizontal segregation in higher education and research. As scientists, we feel accustomed to deal with the reality. We are also determined to be optimistic, designing our hopes for our future achievements towards a better world for all. This inauguration ceremony has a very special meaning for us. Therefore, on behalf of the Board of Directors and the Scientific Advisory Board of Evora, I would like to thank you very much for making it even more meaningful by your presence here. I would like to thank Commissioner Carlos Moedas, Commissioner Vera Jurova, UN Women Regional Director for Europe and Central Asia, Mrs. Gisla Dottir, Ambassador Selim Yenel and Ambassador Timor Ranta, Commissioner Tibor Navraksix, all the speakers and chairs for their invaluable contributions. I would also like to thank our main sponsor, Garanti Bank, for supporting us throughout the years. During the organization of our conference and also this inauguration ceremony, we have had great help from the EUA. For that, I would like to thank present and former presidents of EUA, Helena Nazare and Rolf Tarak, and the General Secretary, Leslie Wilson. I also would like to thank such higher education networks as LERU, UNICA, IAUP, Coimbra, CMU, together with Pricewaterhouse Law Square for their interest in and support for our cause. Dear colleagues, we know we have a long way to go, but we are determined to work. As Collard says, success is a journey, not a destination. Thank you very much.